Club. Jenny's the driving force behind the project that we are backing in the Kokori province of PNG, Papua New Guinea. Uh, the Papua New Guinea government has a well-defined indifference to its population. <laughs> as evinced by the foreign ministry doesn't have any views. As evinced by the huge corruption uh, 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 level in, in uh, PNG, 150th of 190 countries. So it is up to people like us to take a defined view on what can be done. And here we have another dental project. So, Jenny, thank you very much indeed. Hello, and um, it's great to be back again. I feel a little bit undaunted having to follow Naomi's talk, but... <laughs> Isn't it wonderful that we have such wonderful young women doing such fantastic work? It just makes me feel so good. So, well done, Naomi. So, um, you may recall that we've done dental projects before which the <coughs> Wellington Rotary has supported, dental, dental and medical. Papua New Guinea now, since independence in 1975, has gone backwards at an at a escalating rate. And so now where there used to be schools and medical clinics and hospitals throughout the country, these are no longer functioning because the government service doesn't function. And so um, at the, uh, before I worked in the Western Province um, and did the projects with your support there, now I'm in Kikori, which is in the Gulf. The work we did before was on the fly in the Stripling River over here in 2006, 8 and 9, and now I'm down here in the Gulf. And we get 19 metres of rain a year down here, it's all swampy. <laughs> and Kikori used to be a government outpost. It had shops, banks, schools, a hospital, um, post office, everything working. Now nothing functions. There is The hospital is now supported by the Gulf Christian Mission, which is one of the many offshoots of various sorts of religions in PNG and um, it services probably several hundred thousand people with one just graduated doctor, no midwives, one dental technician and that's it. And so you can see that it's quite a significant need there and I met on the plane going up last time a researcher from the, uh, Melbourne University I think who's working with Exxon on tuberculosis in Papua New Guinea and he said they're doing research all over the country and they found that Kikori has the highest rate of TB in the world and he said actually we think that everybody has TB there it's just that you you sometimes it doesn't show for several years and there are many different sorts several of them are incurable so it's there is a TB ward at the hospital and I walked past it to get to the little room where the dental clinic is and it's like some sort of horror movie where there's a big hall with windows and people hanging out of it. There must be like 400 people stuffed into this hall and all these sick people in this one. It's just unbelievable. <coughs> too. So when you, when you go there and you see that, you'll see that it's actually not hard for me to be quite determined to make do something in these places. And I don't see any change with the current situation in PNG that things are going to improve. So just quickly, the, the room in the clinic is, um, they have a, a technician who wasn't there and hadn't been there for several months when I was there. Um, years ago, they had been donated these chairs, which no longer work, and I think the electrics and all the things just kind of rust in the, in the humidity. So um, the, there's chairs and there's... Um, this is the, um, on the... On the right, that's the thing that you know, um, the x-ray thing. And then on the left is the um, non-working steriliser. So that was Kikori. So that's what we're going in to do now. Thank you very much for your support on that. And the company that I'm with, in, with now is called Heritage Oil, and I've persuaded them to support the dental project um, in such a way that they'll pay the wages of a just-graduated national dentist from the local school in Port Moresby, and she is only 24, and when I met her I felt a little bit nervous about it because she's so young, but I think she'll be fine. And um, they're going to pay her wages and maintenance and support for whatever equipment we get. So they'll do that, and they will also pay for equipment, but, you know, their budgets 
200,000 US, which will go a long way towards it, but it won't keep it going forever. But certainly we can get started. So um, this Rotary Club supported us in 2006. This was Soma Kofa in the Western Province. And um, we treated 400 people in a week with um, this fellow here is Matupi Apayo. <clears throat> he was, he's the only Australian trained dental surgeon in Papua New Guinea, uh, the only surgeon in Papua New Guinea for dental work. And he's now heading the um, school and trained or graduate dentists. They're not trained to Western standards, but they're, they're trained as mm -hmm. much as they can be trained. So this was all in Soma Copa in there. We, we, um, we just had a tarpaulin and a plastic chair, and we trained the locals to hold the head. But remember this, the fellow who was holding the head passed out with the stress of it. So we had to <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was 2006. <laughs> and, um, and then in 2008, we did another project with your support, and that was in Hesalibi village, another remote village. And we did the same thing as we did in Somakopa. Oops. Uh, except we had um, portable dental equipment, then Matupi bought his own equipment and that made a big difference. And we're thinking that we'll purchase portable equipment for this clinic in Kikori so this dentist can go to other places apart from Kikori because I tell you Kikori is like a place you wanted to get out of every now and then. And then in 2009 this club supported us in the, um, we did a two week dental, um, we did uh, family planning, and if you remember, that was the time that I stepped in and was the assistant doctor for vasectomies, and I did 150. It was quite an experience. And um, we also did IUDs and dental work at Lake Murray. And here's Dr. Pio again with his portable gear. And um, he trained he trained some of the local boys in being assistants, and they're now acting as dentists in Lake Murray. That All the training they had was the two weeks he gave them. So that's the status of things in Papua New Guinea at the moment. There's Matupi with his portable gear. And remember that trip we ran out of food and I had to go around and find fish and these are the happy fisher ladies in, in um, Lake Murray. So that was, and then uh, I tried to buy chicken and we, we managed to find some villagers who stoned this chicken to death for me. That was our dinner, and uh, I persuaded a deer hunter to go and shoot deer for us. With a, and the way he did it was he made this little um, reed caller, and what he would do is stand in the swamp at dusk behind the reeds and wait till they came close, and then stab them with a bush knife in the neck. So he he caught five in one morning yeah. for us, and he gave us one. And I said, but I paid for five, and he said. Yes, but there's only 12 of you and there's 400 of us. So, <laughs> so, right, so that, this food sort of kept us going over that project. So that's just a bit of a history to, to let you know how, how much the people of PNG benefited from, from the work that you've enabled me to do in Papua New Guinea. And so I do help with this, I do appreciate this help. I know that I won't talk for too long. So that's my email address now. The other projects I'm involved with is Melbourne University is working on anti venine for the snakes in PNG, which are unique. And so I've been paying 10 keener a tail for dead snakes on our seismic project and sending them to the fellow who's working in PNG on that. And um, Heritage is supporting the Rugby Union Women's Sevens because that is going to be an Olympic sport in Rio and they're hoping to get the team to Rio because we can send three teams from Oceania. That'll be New Zealand, Australia, and then it'll be between PNG and Fiji for the third <coughs> place. So we're hoping to put PNG women on the map this way because I think sport is a great way to raise the profile. So any, any assistance people can give me with any suggestions on how to help get coaching or whatever for these women would be useful. And um Simpsons. How about Ron the Beans? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> and so the, <laughs> the dentist is if if anybody feels like doing something that's not too onerous, the dentist's name is Elsie and she's very sweet, she's terribly naive and I mean she knows how to be a dentist. 
but yeah, phone good. calls to her when she's in Kokori from someone here saying, oh, we're from Wellington Rotary because she knows that you're supporting and we're just keen, glad you've out. Just any kind of call would help. She'll have an email address too, but the email may not work very often. And so you could get that information from Gerald or Jo Lake. But actually, I called Jo and she's just had pneumonia, so she's not, she's not around at the moment. So Gerald is your contact. So thank you. Thank you.